today we're going to be talking about one of the most haunted artifacts that exist today. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to my channel or simply not yet subscribed, my name's Brittany. Definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. I always love a good haunted artifact. And when I came across this one, I was captivated. Today, we're going to be talking about the crone. The crone is considered one of the most haunted and frightening objects. So much that people who come in contact with it are not allowed to touch it. And even that doesn't always stop them from having experiences. The crown is a statue with nails hammered into its face and a noose around its neck. It's not this pleasant looking thing. Like you see it and you're like, oh, wow, that's associated with some evil. Two friends, one we know his name was Danny. We don't know the other one's name. We're hiking in the Catskills near Sundown Forest. And they found this statue in one of the caves. The cave was a pretty long way off the trail. And there had been a fire in the cave not long before they had been there. The statue unnerved Danny. But the other friend wanted to take it home. I feel like that just screams bad juju. The friend that had taken the statue home started to say that he thought it was haunted because it would move around on its own. And he started noticing this strange smell. Danny, the friend that didn't have the statue, initially took to Reddit to talk about this. And there were no numerous people that would respond different things. Some people thought that the statue was involved with voodoo. Others thought that it was for sure the work of a sat satanic cult. And if you obviously thought like it was just something to scare some hikers and not really anything to worry about. Then an update was posted on Reddit. In addition to the statue moving, there were now knocks and banging. His friend would wake up in the middle of the night with the feeling as if something was watching him. I get that feeling all of the time and it is... Not a fun feeling in the middle of the night. And along with this feeling that something was watching him, every single time that he would wake up, he got this strong smell of pond water. And if you guys know what that smell, it's not a good smell. And this guy, he didn't really believe in the paranormal. So a lot of the strange experiences, he kind of just shoved off. Until the statue had moved from his desk to the living room. And every night after that, the statue would move rooms completely on its own. Even weirder, the dog would not go by it. Almost as if it sensed that something was just not right. The dog, like, cats and dogs, they all have this higher sense of what's good and what's bad and, like, the just paranormal in general. After the statue was in the house, the dog also started to go to the bathroom in the house, which was very abnormal for it. But then at three in the morning, the man heard a knock at the door. He answered it and no one was there. As soon as he opened the door though, he knew that was something that he shouldn't have done. The man stayed up all night and then the next day he went to the movies because he just wanted to kind of clear his head and take his mind off it. When he got home, Everything felt fine until it didn't. He woke up around 10 to his dog frantically barking. The smell of pond water was the strongest that it had been. And when he walked into the hallway, he saw muddy footprints everywhere. There were footprints as in like a person wearing shoes. They were bare footprints. He was like a thousand percent positive that he had locked all the doors and all the windows before he went to bed. And when he checked, everything was still locked. And right in the living room was the statue that had moved once again. Now, every time he went by the statue, it sounded like someone was breathing. The man was so freaked out that he took his dog and he went to Danny's house. So we're gonna jump back a few months before the 
Reddit post. Dana and Greg Newkirk, who are paranormal investigators from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. They have acquired a collection of haunted artifacts and they do lectures and shows where people can actually interact with them. This is known as the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult. So a few months before this Reddit post, Dana and Greg were filming with the Finding Bigfoot team, looking for Bigfoot. And at the end of the season's filming schedule, Chris Carter, who was one of the production's assistants, came across this post as he was scrolling through Reddit. So he commented on the post and said that they should get in contact with Dana and Greg and left their contact information. I'm assuming just like an open email. That night, Greg received an email from Danny, the hiker whose friend had taken home the crown. Greg told Danny that he thought that he should return the statue and apologize to whatever spirit or entity that is attached to it or attached to the area. He asked Danny, a couple of questions about the area and he told him do not burn it throw it away or destroy it because that could anger the spirit more greg ended the email letting him know that if he's more comfortable he could give it to them they can kind of investigate it and try to find out more about it two days later danny responded thanked greg for the advice he said that he went back with his friend to get the statue so they could go and return it. And when they got there, the muddy footprints and the smell were still there. The dog wouldn't even go in the house. His friend went to show him where he left the statue and it wasn't there. Instead, it was in the hallway with a giant crack on the wall as if the statue had been thrown at it. Danny and his friends apologized to the spirit for taking the statue out of the cave and asked if they should bring it back to the cave. Then they got this overwhelming feeling that they shouldn't go back there and they decided ultimately to send the crone to Dana and Greg. As they were standing talking to the statue, the dog started frantically barking. When they went to check on the dog, they saw a woman standing in the dark corner of the living room. She was completely naked, old and dripping water. Her eyes were glowing in the dark. She was hunched over near the shelves. They obviously got freaked out and they ran outside. And when they went back in, the woman was gone. I apologized again, wrapped the crone in a pillowcase and sent it to Dana and Greg. Not even a week later, the statue arrived at Weird HQ where Dana and Greg received it. The carving itself looked aged and weathered along with the nails. However, the rope that made the noose couldn't have been more than a year old. Dana and Greg figured that the statue was recently placed in the cave with the addition of the noose. Now, whenever Greg and Dana get a new artifact, they take pictures of it. They kind of, you know, jot down some notes of how it looks when they first arrive. Then they, so they did that. They locked the office to run some errands. And later that night, Dana and Greg were watching a movie when they heard loud noises coming from their office. They thought it was their two cats kind of like fighting. So Greg got up to try to break up the fight. But when he got to the office's door, he realized that it hadn't been open since before they left. He opened the door and everything looked fine. The cats were actually in a completely different room, but they were scared and cowering under the bed. So Greg went back to the office to try to figure out what the noise was. And as he was doing so, he almost stepped on Jesus. On the floor was the plastic figurine of Jesus that would be normally nailed to a cross. The figure was missing an arm. And on the complete other side of the room, the cross was silently just swinging in the corner. The only piece of Jesus remaining on that cross was his arm. They had literally pulled the figure from the cross without removing it from the wall and then threw the figure across the room. Greg was never able to find the nails that went on Jesus's hands and his feet, which is important because we will go back to that. And directly below the cross was the crone. Almost kind of like a, yeah, 
I did that. So immediately Dana and Greg were like, yeah, we got to set up this like 24 hour surveillance because we need to see if this is something. They place a motion sensor trail camera in the corner of the office facing the direction of the cross along with covering a bunch of different artifacts they have. For almost two months, nothing was captured. However, on March 2nd, between 3 and 4 a.m., the camera went off three times. When they originally looked at the footage, they saw what looked like orbs floating in and out of frame. But orbs are really hard because you don't know if it's bugs, you don't know if it's dust, like, it's, it's kind of hard to 100% decipher, oh, this is a spirit. However, these specific orbs look like they have their own light source. And then they put the clips together. And that's when they noticed that the crone had moved. Keep in mind that the camera was completely stationary. So there's really no reason for the crone to appear to have moved even the slightest bit because the camera's not moving. After this, they went weeks without anything happening. Until one day, Dana found wet footprints on the back of their couch. She called Greg and was like, hey, why are you standing on the back of the couch immediately after you get out of the shower? But he hadn't taken a shower for hours and he knew that this in no way could have been him. For days after, their house had this lingering smell of pond water and dread and paranoia just filled their home. They dealt with the smell for two weeks and they were just like, okay, I'm done. The smell was just getting worse. Greg stormed into the office, grabbed the crone and slammed it on the coffee table. He sat back down on the couch and started talking to the crone. He explained to them, hey, we're happy to give you a home, but this is our house and you need to follow our rules. I told the crone that if they had left him with the hikers, that they probably would have found their way into a fire pit or a garbage can. If they went to a priest, then they would be buried or bound or worse, locked on a dusty shelf for years. Like, we're happy to let you live here, but only if you respect the situation. If you've got unfinished business, we'll help you put it to bed. But if you don't treat us with respect, you're going in the box. Box was a term that they had coined for spirits or entities that were attached to objects that just were really playing nice. They would place the artifact in their very own locked box. As soon as Greg had finished talking, Dana heard the sound of rushing water. And this was coming from the other side of the house. So they ran to it, found no water. Then back in the living room, they heard a dull thud. The crone had managed to roll off of the coffee table and under the TV stand. As Greg had knelt down to grab the crone, Dana yelled and ran to catch the TV. The screen had almost fallen directly on his head. They then heard three loud knocks from the living room wall. It was so strong that it rattled the pictures and it made the lights flicker in the room. So clearly the crone was kind of trying to state its dominance and was just like, hey, no, I'm in charge here. You don't mess with me. And in the paranormal world, three is always a bad sign. Like they're mocking the holy trinity. So that night, the crone became one of the very few artifacts that had their own locked box. The smell of pond water then went away. The horrible feelings went away. But they still felt as if something was there with them. The crone would go on tour with them. But as a look, don't touch. Artifact. Instantly, people would experience these strange things things with the crone. The most common feeling would be that their eyes were burning. Some psychics or sensitives believed that the crone was a vessel for inhuman spirits. Others believed that it was a curse with the intention to blind and kill someone. And one medium believed that the crone isn't a he or she, it's an it, and was used multiple times throughout the years. The purpose was different each time, but the carving 
and the entity was always the same. This would explain how the carving, the nails, and the noose all had different wear, different time to them. She also said that the entity in the crown knew that she could unveil who it was and was not happy about it. Greg believed that the crone was made to summon the spirit of a witch that someone was aiming to trap and contain a certain spirit. Dana believed that the crone was used as a protection object to ward a sacred ritual area, which I know sounds crazy, but if you mess with a sacred area, just as I guess the same instance as sacred Indian burial ground or sacred Native American burial grounds, bad things happen. <laughs> they don't like it. So if you're taking something from a sacred area, you could have a negative response. However, I don't think that's what this is. I think that it's a very harmful spirit. Another psychic isn't sure why it was carved in the first place, but believes it to be a Babylonian spirit, specifically Marduk, who is associated with it. Marduk is associated with water. Greg and Dana think that they kind of narrowed down the location a little bit to where the cave might be. They believe that the crone was found in this area of like 500 acres in the Catskill Mountains. This specific section of land has connection to early witchcraft trials. During a 24-7 live video feed, the crone was viewed by hundreds of people at one time. There were light anomalies and electromagnetic fluctuations and just this uneasy feeling that was reported by several people. Years actually reported that the spirit manifested to them in their own home through this video feed. There were power outages, electronic equipment failures, and burning eyes that were all reported. And in the last few days of the live feed, Greg and Dana had asked their viewers for experiment ideas with the crown. The most popular was a voodoo coffin nail, holy water, and a crucifix as trigger objects. On the last night of this 24-7 feed, the crone seemed to flick the nail away. Dana and Greg have not seen the spirit itself. However, weirdly, on July 6, 2016, Greg woke up in the morning to a rather alarming message on their Facebook page. The message was from a girl who was a regular during the lives. She stated that she wasn't able to view the feed. However, she woke up around 440 in the morning to the weight of someone sitting on her back. She assumed at first that this was her two-year-old daughter. However, when she moved, she could feel each leg lifting and sliding off of her, which clearly she knew was not her daughter. A few moments later, she heard a loud bang and her two dogs ran from the living room to their beds in the laundry room. However, before she woke up, she was dreaming of a woman whispering in her ear that Greg had swallowed the missing nails from the cross. That the spirit had actually placed the nails in Greg's mouth while he was sleeping. Greg was never able to find the nails. And even stranger, just days after the incident, he was experiencing these, he was experiencing these severe stomach pains so bad that he questioned, should I go to the hospital for this? And in this message, the girl did stress another point. The spirit was very proud of what she had done, proud of hurting him. How terrifying is that? Spirits can often communicate through dreams, so it could really be the crone that was communicating with her. I don't know if the crone was the one sitting on her or not, but if she was having that dream and then that happened, it definitely could have been the crone being there and then whispering to her. Let me know if you guys have ever came in contact with the crone and... If you want me to dive into any other haunted artifacts, let me know down below. Make sure to like this video, hit, hit the like, subscribe ooh, button, hit the subscribe button, and then comment down the button. The glad to your tingle. Bye. <laughs> Till next time. Love you. Bye. Bye.